This is Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to go over how to quickly and easily build a skyscraper in Cinema 4D and after that use that as a base for a quick and easy way to build out a small little city in just a couple minutes. So this is an example render of what we could easily get to with these techniques and if we look at our scene file in Cinema 4D we have a bunch of buildings based on this so let's build one first and I'm just going to do file new Cinema 4D file and let's get started with building this skyscraper. So to get that started I'm just going to grab a cube and I'm going to turn on my display line so I can see the edges. And what I'm going to do is make this in size Y 400, so it'll be a rectangle. And then segments for X, Y, Z, I'm going to put 20, 20, 20. And you can already kind of visualize where we're maybe going with this technique of building a skyscraper and knocking into windows. So let's move this up to my ground plane. And then I want to add a fillet cap so we'll have nice rounded edges on the main edges. So I'll do fillet, but I'll turn the radius down to like 2 so it's smoothed out. And then what I want to do is select all of these polygons in the center for where I would want windows. So I'm going to make this cube editable by pressing C or this button. And then I'm going to look in my side view and I'm going to do in the side view, same thing, make sure display lines is turned on and I can turn on lines if I wanted. And then I'm going to get my rectangle selection tool and I'm going to go to polygons. And what I want to do is turn off only select visible elements so I can select everything when I make a selection like this and then I'm going to turn on tolerant selection so it selects ones that I only partially select and then I have all of the windows. Now what I want to do to make these windows is two steps. I'm going to do a matrix extrude and push them into each polygon so I'm going to press M to get this window and then X and this is to make much more complex extrusions but what I can do is turn steps to one Turn rotation down to nothing, and then it's just going to scale it. And rather than that, I'm going to undo that so it doesn't scale out, and I'll just drag left. And then it's just going to make one 80% scale all around extrusion here. And what I can do is press E to get back to my move tool, and then I'm going to press D for extrude. And then I'm going to drag left, and I can pull those in. And we grab these edges, which is fine. I kind of like that there's little windows here. But before that part, if you wanted to not have those, you could just grab specific ones or rings of polygons to get all sorts of designs for windows. Now, these are the windows. And what's nice about this technique is I already have them selected. So I can save this selection to use later for texturing by doing select set selection or by pressing shift C and then typing in set selection and double clicking on set selection right here. And what that's going to do is save this selection and I can rename it windows. And what this does, if I go back to my move tool and click off, what this will let me do is at any point, double click that little tag and then I can re-grab those windows that I selected. So what I can do now with this building is I'm going to go to my model tool and this is already one little block of a building. So I can make two textures. I'm going to just make a main black texture for kind of some steel. So I'll double click and go to that texture and for color I'll do dark gray and I'll add reflection and turn on Fresnel and put the brightness at like 10 so it's just a little reflective and took mix strength down to like 25 and then I'm going to drop that onto my objects and that's going to texture our whole building so now if I wanted to texture just the windows, I'll make another texture. So I'll just double click down here and let's make one that looks like windows. So I'm going to just actually turn off color and for transparency, turn that on and put refraction at 1.52. So it looks like glass. And then what I can do is drag this one also onto my cube and set the selection to windows because we made that windows selection tag. And if I zoom in here and now do a command R, we can see that we have the main texture and then on the windows we have just the window texture and it's seeing straight through. And we could make that transparency a little blurry. We'll put this at like one or two so it's not completely absolutely 
transparent glass, but we get a little bit of you know, haze going on. And now at this render, if we just quickly check on ambient occlusion in our render settings and take a look at this, I'm going to swing around. We can see that we're already getting some nice work here. We have all these beams that look like a building and the windows cut in and we're getting nice detail because of this two-step extruding process. Now we have our main cube, so I just double click this and rename this stack. And what we could do if we want a bigger one is I'm going to hold command and drag up and that's going to make a copy when I let go of the mouse. And then I can just scale this one down with T and do the same thing, hold command and drag up and duplicate and scale down. And then very quickly we have a whole skyscraper. And what I could do is just grab some cylinders and put some posts on the top. So I'll just grab a cylinder, scale this down and make it taller. So it's the top post here that's coming out of the top and same idea, I could duplicate this by holding command and dragging up and then just scale this down so we get a nice little antenna on the top and we can grab both of those and put them in a group. So I'll do option G and call this antenna. And then I'll make a similar texture and just make it white. So I'll drag down here with command, double click, and for a color, just change this to white. And then I can drag it onto this antenna group that I have. So let's drag it there and I can look from the top view and hold command and drag to make a copy. So very quickly within a matter of minutes, we have a whole little building that we can build out and get a start on a skyscraper and a city. Now, another thing that's nice about these techniques is we have this main stack and that could be the start of any building. So if we wanted to duplicate this we could just duplicate this first stack and i'll call this maybe an office for office building and i can drag this out and i'll just press t and scale this to the left and we can just get a whole different building maybe scale that down and then i can grab everything else except that and i'll do option g and call this building one and another little technique for taking these maybe we have this slanted kind of office building with different antennas. Again, I'll just take this first stack, move it out, scale it up a bit. And then on this one, I'll put a taper deformer from up here. So I'll grab taper, make it a child of this stack. And then on the taper deformer, do fit to parent. And we can see if we turn up the strength, it's gonna curve it, but that looks too cartoony. So we can take down the curvature. And now we have a third type of building all in this little system of buildings all from this one little technique that only took a couple minutes to set up and put together. Now this is a really good start to a city and one little extra bonus tip on building this together. We'll just call this building three. Is that my building one, my office building and my building three. What I can do if I wanted like a city block is grab a cloner and go to MoGraph cloner and then I'll set this to grid array and set it to five on X, one on Y, five on Z. And we can drop these in. But one thing we'd want to do first is set these anchor points to the ground. As we can see, they're all kind of at different points. So if I go to mesh axis center, axis center, it brings up this little dialog box for moving this around and why it's useful for this method when I have it in a group is if I check on include all children and objects and do Y negative 100 and execute, it's going to snap it to exactly the bottom of this group. So I can do the same thing with the other two, execute, execute. And now if I drop these into my cloner, that's a grid array, I can take my cloner and scale it up. And if I had, you know, 30 different types of buildings, I can very quickly have a whole little city. And one other note, if we're using repeating buildings, what we could do is on this cloner, not only have it clone repeating ones, but if we add a basic plane effector, so MoGraph effector plane, and rather than position, turn off position, turn on rotation and set it to 90. And then we get them rotating at 90. And if we wanted to throw another effector, MoGraph effector random on the same cloner, so select that first random effector we could randomize not position but scale uniform scale and turn that up 
and that'll grow and shrink all of our buildings. So you figure if you built out, you know, five or 10 buildings, you could very easily have a city of buildings that looks all different only in a couple of minutes. So this was Sean Frangella teaching you some Cinema 4D tips on building a skyscraper and setting up a little city block from that. Be sure to stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on premiumbeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other video apps. And if you want to see more of what I do and check out some of my other Cinema 4D tutorials, you can find those at seanfrangella.com and youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all Premium Beat channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials. And I will see you at the next video.